I remember that my first visit to Texas was was uh, who uh, I I be invited to come here with Father Fabro, uh, Cornelio Fabro, uh, to visit uh, Dallas and to give a speech in the Jesuit College. This was in 1974 because uh, Cornelio Favreau received the medal, Thomas Aquinas medal, by the Association of Catholic Philosophers. And this was my first visit to this uh, country. I am very glad to, have, to, to be here again. I would like to thank the brothers Hittinger, Russ and, uh, and John, for the, this initiative, and of course the people to organize this very important meeting that I'm very happy to be, especially Ms. Hall for the organization, and Dr. Sommers for his contribution, uh, very important. Of course, Pope Francis maybe is not an prof academic professor, but he was professor of literature, but he has very significant and precise insight about, about many things. One is this, that he, in his interview in America Magazine, the church has experienced times of brilliance like that of the Thomas Aquinas, and of course, we can say that he's, he is a Thomist in, in his study. He criticized the, the, after the, the manuals and that he studied, but in the end he studied Thomas Aquinas. And in this sense, I think that the comment of Thomas Aquinas about the Beatitudes is just the program of the Pope. And for this, I tried to put together the speeches of the Pope about his proposals and the Thomas Aquinas comment of the Beatitude that we have uh, in uh, the comment of Matthew. And of course, it's a reportage, but it's very precise and very genial comment. There are many documents that serve as reference points to understand Pope Francis, new attitude and the program of his pontificate. Like Mozart in music, he is creative and renew in different ways the substantiveness issues that he has in his mind and in his hair. He wants to make them his own and to respond to his important experience of of pastor, as pastor. Of all his speech, maybe I would like to analyze one in particular, perhaps the most spontaneous and significant, which he gave to the young people from Argentina that he met in Rio de Janeiro in the cathedral of San Sebastian. He, he began by saying, let me tell you one I hope will be the outcome of the world young day. I hope there will be noise. He say Leo for the people to understand Spanish. And casino is the translation in Italian. Here there will be noise. I am quite sure. Here in Rio there will be plenty of noise. Not Duped about that, but I want you to make yourself heard in your diocese, he said to the bishop that are present. I want to noise to go out. I want the church to go out onto these streets. I want us to resist everything worldly, everything static, 
everything comfortable, everything to do with clericalism, everything that might make us close in our ourselves. He expe expe explained that Jung and all must fight together against an exclusive society dominated by the financial humanism, he said, which only seeks profit or its own advantage and so consciously or not is committing suicide but marginalize its future young people and its wisdom, the elderly. The pop exact words were, look, at this moment, I think our world civilization has gone beyond its limits. It has gone beyond its limits because it made money into such a good that we are now faced with a philosophy and a practice which exclude the two ends of the life that are most full of promise for people. They exclude the early, obviously. You could easily think there is a kind of hidden euthanasia. That is, we don't take care, care of the early. But there is also cultural euthanasia because we don't allow them to speak. We don't allow them to act. And there is the exclusion of the young. The percentage of our young people without work, without employment, is very high. And we have generations with not experience of the dignity gained through the work. This civilization, in other words, has led us to exclude the two peaks that make up our future. Therefore, we must act and work to change this status quo. But what is the starting point to reverse this suicide trend, especially in the West? It is the faith in Jesus Christ. In Kierkegaard Jones, Francis said, faith in Jesus Christ is not a joke. It is something very serious. It is a scandal that God came to be one of us. It is a scandal that he died on a cross. It is a scandal, the scandal of the cross. The cross continued to provoke scandal. But it's the one sure path, the path of the cross, the path of Jesus, the path of the incarnation of Jesus. Please do not water down your faith in Jesus Christ. We dilute fruit drinks, orange, apple, and banana juice, juice. but please do not drink I diluted from the faith. Faith is wall and entire, not something that you water down. It is faith in Jesus. It is faith in the Son of God made man, who loved me and who died for me. So then make yourself heard. Take care of the two ends of the population, the early and the young, do not allow yourself to be excluded, and do not allow the early to be excluded. As son of Saint Ignacio, founded of the spiritual exercise, Pope Francis argues that the solution does not lie as much in discussing, discussing the essence of Christianity, because it is relatively easy to understand the threshold of the mystery. But above all, it lies in practicing faith and charity, which is more difficult. In this, he is existential like Kierkegaard, who say that Christianity has no essence, but is a practice to perform on existence. We have to become Christ's contemporaries by actively participating in his grace and his and in the love of his spirit. Lord Jesus Christ, Kierkegaard writes, in the practice of the Christianity. Look, practice of the Christianity. You did not come to
to the world to be served and thus not to be admired or in that sense worshipped. You yourselves were the way of the life and the life and you have asked only for imitators. If we have those of into the infatuation, wake us up, rescue us from this error of waiting to admire or adoring admire you instead of waiting to follow you and be like. Now, in the light of this, what does Pope Francis intend as the problem of his pontificate? He points to the Beatitudes and Matthew 25. When a young man in Rio asked him, what should we do, Father? Francis replied, look, read the Beatitudes that will do you good. If you want to know what you actually have to do, read Matthew chapter 25, which is the protocol by which we will be judged. With these two things, you have the action plan, the Beatitudes and Matthew 25. You don't need to read anything else. What are the Beatitudes, the program of his pontificate? Because they were the basis of Jesus Christ's own program, expressed in the famous Sermon of the Mount. In this Pope, Francis coincided with Thomas Aquinas, who said that they contain all the perfection of our life. Tota perfectio vita nostra continetu, according to the reportatio of Petri of Andria. To them, the Lord explained to us his plan, his promise, and renew he will give us to fulfill our happiness, which is what we naturally aspire to with all our beings and action. In short, the Beatitudes explain and indicate the path and the ultimate prize that is God's reward, which is what true happiness is. We all aspire to this happiness, but only those who follow and persuade the Beatitudes with perseverance in the practical exercise of their lives deserve it. Therefore, Thomas says that where Moses made the commandments his foundation, Jesus Christ promulgated the Beatitudes above everything else as the synthesis, reduction, and project of Christian life. As St. Thomas say in his commentary of Matthew 5, following the famous question of Aristotelic in general, we all aspire, aspire to happiness, but human beings differ when judging what it is. Some will think of it as something other as something else. Today mentality, according to the Pope, plays happiness in external and material things, war style, in artificial realities such as money and finance, was is virtually money, the famous derivatives or titles derived from other financial entities which are a game between the present and the future, meaning that they increasing represent a value that is less real and more random. The medium turns into the purpose, the future turns into the present, reality turns into the possibility. Incidentally, in this view, our Pope is not only inspired by St. Francis of Assis, but also very much by St. Ignatius, who had already senses the experience of modern capitalism somewhat evil soul. Let us recall the central meditation of the spiritual exercise on the two flags. You either chose to be at the service of Christ or 
on the other side, and under the role of Mamona Iniquitatis. Moreover, St. Ignatius also teach us that Lucifer instruct the demons first to tend with a longing for riches, so that men may more easily come to vain honor of the world and then to all other vices. Many others want money not only for themselves, but also to satisfy their own wins. I do not know whether in general you too have noticed that it is characterized of billionaires to be cap capricious. It is already on the score in Ecclesiastes. I recognize that there is nothing better than to be glad and to be well during life. The two, these two false views of human happiness, one based on money and the other on follow one's own whims, lead to corruption with, according to Pope Francis, is the daughter of Satan. Moreover, corruption is the Antichrist itself because it produces structures of sin that corrupt the world with never before seen form of criminality. This is the globalization of indifference toward the human person and the common good that the Pope denounced in his homage to the brutal death in the sea of Lampedusa. A few others a little more worthy in this scale of errors, believe that happiness today consists in having an active life according to a golden mediocrity and worthy bourgeois comfort. Yet others believe a sterile theoretical discussion that the Pope qualifies as spiritual worldliness. All these opinions are false and harmful. Pope Francis, like Jesus Christ, in the Sermon of the Mount, flies and condemns them with determination, passion, and courage. Currently, the more widespread false opinion is disrupted or rather transformed and turned inside out like a globe by the beatitude that Pope Francis considered central, as it is the advice of Jesus Christ himself on poverty. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. St. Luke, the friend of the marginalized in the Roman Empire, is more trench. Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of the God is yours. To those who think the kingdom of heaven can be reached by the way of riches, but with the highest honor of this world are also obtained, the Lord does in fact promise the kingdom, the kingdom which comprises wealth and dignity, but via the opposite way, through poverty and service. It is not about dominating, but about serving. We see that, thanks to wealth, man occurs the power to commit any sin and to satisfy the desire for everything, because money can help you obtain any temporal good as already not, not in ecclesiastic money answer for everything. And by the great Spanish poet Quevedo, over kings and priests and scholar rules, they may lore of dollars. The Pope is right concerning about the growing phenomenon of crime, primarily financial crime, but every more of its deleterious consequence, such as the orif crime of the human trafficking that is spreading with the globalization of indifference. 
Some two million boys and girls disappear every year to meet the needs of the growing global sex market of the wealthy, which is euphemistically called sex tourism. Since the International Palermo Protocol Against Human Traffic was instituted in 2003, this crime has produced over 20 million missing persons, and this figure is only the tip of the iceberg. In this sense, it is clear that a longing for riches is the root of all sins, and St. Paul say, followed by Ignatius and St. Francis. Pope Francis see this link very clearly. At the meeting we are current organized at the Pontifical Academy of Sciences on Human Traffic, a psychologist is going to explain how a minority of wealthy people has produced the psychological pathology of the global sexual market. He say, the liberation of the sex become the sex slavery. That's very interesting, this text. As St. Thomas say, there is a deep connection between the capital sins so that one calls and leads to another. Therefore, blessed are the poor, but who are the poor really? As Thomas say, firstly, there are the humble who regard themselves as poor, for they are truly humble who regard themselves as poor, not only in external, but also in internal things. Jesus is the master of this attitude. Learn from me, for I am met and humble of her, and you will find, you will find rest for yourselves. And also, St. Paul. The kingdom of heaven can only be rich through poverty and humility. But what those poor in, my, in spirit mean? It is not the poor but necessity or tragic circumstance of life. As some a poor recurs say, we stand with the poor if we fly this poverty, which more often exposes human injustice. We are not with those who love the poor so much that they multiply them. In other words, the poverty that oppress an important part of the contemporary humanity must be fought vigorously. Here we should open a serious chapter about the aim of the economic and the value of the many economic theories and ideology that do not put the human person, justice, and the common good at their center. Social doctrine condemns both the Marxist of the means of production in the hands of the state and the neoliberalism of the make market without rules Injustice is evident today in many countries, especially those who Christian and Catholic roots, especially those without Christian and Catholic root. But if one considers the world as a whole, in a global sense, international justice is clearly visible with the richest countries take advantage of the poor with the arrogance of Eighty, you accept this or nothing. One of the clearest symptoms of the growing tragedy of the world hunger, already denounced by the Pope Paul VI to the United Nations on October 1965, with his famous order to devote to the benefits of the developing countries at least a part of the saving which could be realized through the reduction of armaments. There have since been 
many broken promises in this tragedy, which are also serve several injustice offending human consciousness, and not only hunger and broken promise, but also injustice for the lack of international redistribution, for instance, arbitrariness in the man management of sovereign debt. The poor by necessity of circumstance are not always happy. Those who are happy have made poverty a deliberate spiritual choice. St. Paul say that the grace of God has appeared and train us to live temperate, temperately, just, justly, and devote in this age. Temperately, it is being reasonable in using the goods of the world and in our own actions and passion. Justly, that is, behaving decent toward our neighbors Consider the other as myself, a person as I am person. Therefore, an end, and never merely as means for me, devoutly, namely, behave in the awareness of the existence of God and his presence in me and infinite providence toward me and my brothers. Of those who poor and temperance by choice, some have wealth, but not put in it at the center of the heads, because they are magnanimous and detached. Others do not have much wealth, not those it affect their heads. Their situation is safer, because the mind is easily separate from the spiritual realities by the wealth, bundan weight, and the demand of his administration. Therefore, the later I say to be poor in spirit, because there are, by virtue of the grace of Christ and the gift of the Holy Spirit, poor with a poverty that is above the human way of acting, that is beyond the natural way. These are the men and the women who are truly happy, whom the Lord referred to when he say, blessed are the poor, actually, for man and woman to be able to discard all worldly goods to the point of not appraising them at all, they have to live in an heroic and superhuman way. That is, as true disciples of Jesus Christ, poor and magnanimous at the same time. And Thomas is very nice the explanation of Christ and is one of the last rights of Thomas. Christ is the model. This poverty distinguishes the new law from the old one, and ever from other religions that are very present today and are often aggressive. Uh, special Thomas is explaining about the Muslims. The first things Moses does is promise richness. The Lord you go will set you high above all the nation of the earth. Therefore, to distinguish the old law from the new Christ first place happiness in the content of the temporal things, content to divisarum temporalium. In the Franciscan Marriage with Lady Poverty, which Pope Francis followed, as is also evident in the name he chose for himself. The blessed all have this poverty that come from the excellence of their charity. The opinion of those who put happiness in the selfish satisfaction or their own appetite of win is censored by the following beatitude. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be sh show mercy. We show, be aware, that our appetite is there three, threefold, say Thomas. 
there is the irascible call that seeks revenge against own enemies. And this is rejected by the law with the beatitude that teach, blessed are the meek, beati mites, for they will inherit the land. Then the concupiscence appetite forever seek pleasure. The law condemn it and turn in a round completely when he say, blessed are they who mourn, beati lugen, for they shall be comfort. Here the appetite is dual in its goal of infinite pleasure. Firstly, it want to high low to coerce it in the search of, for corruption. And secondary, it want the other to be a subordinate or subject of his. It is just the opposite of the other as myself or myself as other, which Aristotle already spoke about and which is reproposed today by the, the contemporary ethics for Ricard, Juan Marias, and others. There is a desire, desire to dominate and not to serve or minister. Benedict XVI, during the Mass for the Episcopal ordination of the new Secretary of State, Pietro Parolin, before the letter led for Venezuela's nuncio, has already said, priesthood is not domination, but service, adding that in civil society, and often also in the church, things suffer because many people on whom responsibility has been conferred work for themselves rather than for the community. The Lord crushed, but unrigorous, unrighteous, attitude, that of not being subordinate to any law, spreading corruption with the beatitude, blessed are they who hang and teased for rightness, for justice, for they will be satisfied. The justice of giving to each his due is the social virtue by excellence and will never be perfect on this life, hence the need to be permanently hungry and thirsty. In this sense, Stephen Jobs' famous words, stay hungry, stay foolish, will resonate by strongly, especially with young people all over the world who are certainly inspired by Jesus Christ. The remedy against the desire to dominate is the beatitude. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be show mercy. Therefore, both those who put happiness, put happiness in the external thing, especially in money, and those who put it in fulfill their appetite for worthy pleasure, which cause sickness or corruption, are wrong. Justice and mercy are required together forever because justice without mercy is cruelty, and mercy without justice is the mother of all moral dissolution, say Thomas Aquinas. As Pope Francis say, mercy is having a hair full of compassion for the suffering of the others, particularly those who have been excluded from the banquet of life be it material or spiritual goods. We have mercy on the suffering on others when we felt it as all our, when we are inclined to help and make a gesture of compassion. In fact, when something makes us suffer, we usually try to find ways to overcome this situation. We are truly compassionate when we try to conform the suffering of the others or neighbors just as we conform ourselves. The suffering of the other is double. Firstly, it means 
not possessing the good necessary of life, health, education, work, social security, equal opportunities. And here we show have merciful heads as dictated by St. John. If someone who has worldly means see a brother in need and refuse his compassion, how can the love of God remind him? The second type of poverty in Thomas Aquinas is worse because a human being who sins become wretched as an individual or as member of society. Just as happiness is becoming virtuous and saving others, the most hurtful misery is becoming depraved or corrupt and corrupting others. Hence, when we admonish the corrupt in a proper way, in order for them to make amends, we work God's mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. This beatitude is one of the most necessary in our days, full of temptation, special carnal owns. The hair is God's temple, and we need it to be poor, especially as far as purity of the flesh in concern. Nothing prevents elevation to God as in purity. In contemporary culture, we have both a Marxist and a liberal origin. The sexual revolution ended up having a dark side that becomes sexual slavery. Maybe women have a special mission here more than any other field. The blessed John Paul II was prophetic in his address about the dignity and vocation of women. Mulieres dignitatis at the sister speech the other day. The son who are full of justice, charity, and his effect, which is likeness to God, know the human hair better than any else and come into direct contact with God, see God, say, experience him. Blessed are the pacemakers, for they will be called children of God. This is the seventh beatitude according to Matthew. In brief, spiritual life disposed toward two things, a vision of God and love. Just as purity of hair disposed toward the vision of God, so peace disposed toward the love of God and of our neighbor. For they be, we are called and we are the true children of God and participate in the filiation of his natural son, Jesus Christ. Thus, to peace, we are open to loving our neighbors as ourselves. It is important to note that the price for being children of God is given to pacemaker and those who are persecuted for the sake of weakness. For they is the kingdom of heaven which is some things. Actually, all the praises of beatitude are reduced to these two, and, th and they produce the effect of all the others, which are like their preambles. Who is that acts with poverty of spirit, grief, meekness, if not those whose hearts are poor? Who is that acts with justice and merciful, if not the pace seekers. Only the saints with their poor hearts can grant God's peace. The world cannot give such real peace. Therefore, Thomas Aquinas, there are three reasons why the peaceful and peacemaker are called children of God. The first is because they have the office of the Son of God who come into the world to gather the dispersed. The second is because to peace with charity, one reach the eternal kingdom to which all the children of God are called, and it is already a real forest state of it. Finally, the third is because through charity and grace, the human being become like 
unto God. For where peace is, there is no resistance, as it would be the opposite of peace. Of Pope Francis say, resisting the divine Son, hidden from it, light and love, shooting off the horizon of transcendence, is the opposite of peace. In general, modern man has not peace because he has shut off the horizon of eternity. And this is the essence of the message of Benedict Pope. It is remarkable to see how these beatitudes belong to one another and surpass one another. The more one is merciful, the more one is just and vice versa. The more one is a peacemaker, the more one is children of God and vice versa. There is a gradual circularity among them. One leads to another and the mutual perfect themselves. The Lord then promised the eight beatitudes which signify the perfection of all the previous one. The human being is perfect when he does not give up trying to practice the beatitude even in the event of persecution. As the, as the test of what the porter molds is in the furnace, so in the conversion is the test of a man. The beatitudes say, blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of justice. For they, it is the kingdom of heaven. But one may wonder whether this contradicts this, the message. Blessed are the peaceful, because persecution clearly perturbs the state of peace and precludes it entirely. We answer, the persecution is the cause of the renewal of external peace, but not the internal peace possessed by the peaceful. In this case, persecution itself is not the essence of happiness, but an external occasion allowing it. What makes us happy in Jesus Christ is the practice exercise of justice. This beatitude is made, matched by what St. Peter writes, but even if you should suffer because of justice, blessed are you. It is worth nothing that he does not explain whether it is because of atheists, lay poor or not believers, not those he mentioned the reason for faith like the classic martyrs did, but he only indicates a reason for persecution, the practice of justice, with this the social virtue by excellence. The final beatitude, they may say, blessed are we when they shall reveal you and persecute you and speak all that is evil against you untruly for my sake, which strengthens the meaning of the previous one. These two last beatitudes summarize, of course, the program of Pope Francis in this, he is revolutionary compared to the popes of the last few centuries, but not compared to the previous pope. One for all is Gregory the Great, who lived in the Benedict Monastery on the Selium Hill, where he used to invite the poor to eat at his table every day, while his sister belonged to one of the Roman most noble families, served them. And this led us to Matthew 25, which is good to remember and write down because it is the action plan that the Lord will judge us in the light of the Beatitudes. I suppose the text. First of all, the king, Jesus Christ, who is well represented in the Michelangelo last judgment in the Sistine Chapel, say, blessed by my father, because God is the source and mother from whom we receive all the grace 
and the gift of that we have. By the natural or free, there are two causes or our happiness or beatitude. One, on behalf of the God, the Father, which is the Trinity, which is his blessing. The other of our behal, which is merit based on our freedom to accept God's blessing. We should not be sluggish by cooperated with God give. By the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me has not been ineffective. Every Christian, therefore, is well aware that he should do everything in his power, but that the final result depends of God and his blessing. This conviction must support him in the daily practice of the Beatitudes, especially in difficult situations and in the persecution which derive from performing them. In this regard, St. Ignatius of Loyola teach us in modernity the best rule to act by placing everything in God as fair cause and everything in human freedom sustained by grace as secondary cause. Pray us if everything depends on God and work us if everything depends on you. I think it's a a good, a good synthesis of the idea of Thomas Aquinas. One may wonder why there being so many possible meritorious actions, the Lord proposed here acts of merciful toward our neighbors as the action plan and criteria for the salvation. Some have interpreted this by suggesting that just by performing acts of mercy, one is saved, even if he commits many sins, which is a bit like saying, be a sinner and strong in your sins, but be stronger in your faith and rejoice in Christ. However, thanks to Paul, we know that this is not true. All who practice such things deserve death. And in Galatians, after listing carnal sins, he say, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Thus, this interpretation is illusory. Of course, it may be that if one abstains from sin and does penance, one is released from sin and is saved through alms giving. From alms giving should start from all selves and from the bottom of our heads. Pope Francis always insists on the advice he used to give as a confessor. When you give alms, look fondly in the face of the person you are helping. And what if you are an atheist, as the cause of Eugenius Calfari, the, fo the founder of the successful Italian newspaper La Repubblica? We know that Pope Francis, inspired by Thomas, recently replied to him with a letter telling him to follow his conscience, the first postulate of which is, do good and avoid evil. Bishop Polly himself, the Holy Father's succession as Archbishop of Buenos Aires, recounted a meaning anecdote at the lunch to celebrate his pallium. He was rushing out of the archdiocese in a hurry to get to an appointment with homeless man approach asking for help. Bishop Polly apologized. These 50 pesos are I got, and I need them to catch a taxi to my appointment. Many were the taxi arrived, and 
at the man insisted Bishop Polly promised, come back tomorrow and I will certainly give you something. A homeless man that started shouting, come back Bergoglio, come back. <laughs> the cardinal had a generous head and gave to everyone always. But why does Jesus Christ refer to these acts more than others? According to St. Gregory, it is because this, which he, which he interprets as minimal, presumes the others. If one does not do the primary thing required by natural law, love, one almost certainly would not do the greater others. St. Augustine claims that we all sin in this world, but not all of us condemn ourselves. He who does penance and perform acts of mercy is saved, says St. Augustine. As we shall see Pope Francis in ten acts of mer mercy to include all good acts. So when we fulfill a beatitude, we perform our duty of charity towards our neighbor. Therefore, when we do good to others, first and foremost, we benefit ourselves. And let us not just consider bodily alms, but spiritual alms too. Everything that man beings do for the neighbor result in good for themselves and everything one need to do is contained in the acts of mercy. So what do the writers replay with wonder, with admiration? Lord, when did we see you hungry and feel you or tristly or give you drink? When did we see you a stranger or welcome you or naked and clothe you? When did you see you ill or in prison and visit you? Fairly all of them, they admired the Lord judgment out of sincere humility, but not just for this reason. The Lord replay on this chorus the new evangelical focus that revolution that is a real revolution to all the previous category. I say to you, whether you did for one of these last brothers of mine, you did for me. Why? First of all, because we are all brothers. We are a body who heard is Jesus Christ and we are the limbs, either in act or in potency. But all are human beings, children of God? Yes, they all are the God, the good and the evil, at the very least because they participate in the common human nature that make us brothers but also through participation in the grace of Christ that make us fellow citizens with the Holy Ones and members of the whole household of God. But are we called to do good to everyone? Yes, to everyone, because Christ is the firstborn among many others, many brothers. And we want them all mercifully and service. The apostles say, Will we have the opportunity? Let us do good to all. Basically, we are all called to participate in the grace of Jesus Christ, either actually or potentially. Why does he specify these last brothers? Because they are the natives members under privilege and deprived of the body of Christ. There are 
the open forest of his flesh by acting merciful toward these less brothers or owns, we do so toward Jesus Christ who suffer until the end of the time in them. As Pope Francis said during the recent canonization of Mexican Santa Guadalupe Garcia Zavala, this is called touching the flesh of Christ, the poor, the abandoned, the sick, the marginalized, are the flesh of Christ. And Mother Lupita touched the flesh of Christ and told us this before, not to feel ashamed, not to fear, not to find touching Christ's flesh repugnant. Mother Lupita had realized what touching Christ's flesh actually means. This is the novelty of Francis, who always lived as a Christian where he was a priest and a bishop and want to continue along the same path now that he is the Pope. Thank you.